Hi friends, welcome to Biology Exams for A.com. Today we are going to discuss DPT PET Biotechnology JRF of exam previous questions with detailed explanation of answers. Hopefully this will help you in your preparation. Wishing you the very best for your exam. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Let's begin. Question number one. The major difference between the hormones that have intracellular receptors and those that have cell membrane receptors is that the former is usually. Options are A. Charged, B. Hydrophilic, C. Glycosylated, and D. Hydrophobic. Here the question is, hormones that have intracellular receptors, that is steroid hormones, and those that have cell membrane receptors, that is protein hormones, which is a characteristic of hormones having intracellular receptors. As you know, steroid hormones are hydrophobic. The answer is hydrophobic. While working out question paper, please bear in mind, you have to work out all other options also. Other options may be the probable question in the next exam. Take the case of glycosylation. Glycosylation is an important event that is happening during post-translational modification. Once the protein is synthesized, sugar molecules are added to the formed protein which is called as glycosylation. So there are two types of glycosylation, O-linked and N-linked glycosylation. O-linked often occurs with amino acid residues like serine, threonine, tyrosine which is having OH side chain or side group whereas N-linked is associated with arginine. So moving into this question. Why this answer hydrophobic? Let's move into the detail of this question. So there are three classes of hormones as you know. Steroid hormones, which are lipids, which is derived from cholesterol, which is lipophilic, which can cross the membrane as cell membrane is made up of phospholipid bilayer. Examples include sex hormones such as estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, etc. Then the second type is peptide hormones made up of short polypeptide chains or proteins which are hydrophilic therefore it cannot cross the plasma membrane so receptors will be on the cell membrane examples include insulin glucagon etc the third type is amine hormone that is derived from aromatic amino acids like tryptophan tyrosine etc they are hydrophilic they cannot cross cell membrane example include thyroxine epinephrine etc now regarding this question, this is what is actually happening. The steroid hormone will be having a receptor inside the cell in the cytoplasm. This hormone binds to the receptor, nuclear receptor, and forms a complex, nuclear receptor hormone complex. Then it forms a dimer, then enters the nucleus through nuclear pore and binds to HRA or hormone responsive element, which is a, which is a specific sequence. In a sequence to which this hormone receptor complex binds and activates the transcription of the genes involved. Whereas in the case of protein hormone, the receptor will be on the cell surface. Question number two A patient suffering from allergy has been advised to take antihistamine drugs. Which one of the following biological processes is most likely to be the reason for the allergy? Options are mast cell degranulation, B, thymocyte maturation, C, somatic hypermutation, and D, bystander lysis. Allergy is often associated with mast cell, therefore the answer is mast cell degranulation. This is some information regarding hypersensitivity reaction. Type 1, mast cells are involved along with IgE. Type 2, K cells are involved along with IgG or IgM. Type 3, hypersensitivity, antigen-antibody complex is involved with IgG. And type 4, T helper cells are involved. I will be leaving the link on the description section for your reference. Question number 3. Which one of the following statements is not true for an enhancer element? As you all know, enhancer is a sequence that enhances the rate of transcription of a particular gene. Options are, it can be downstream of the gene it regulates, it can only regulate a nearby gene, 
it can be upstream of the gene it regulates it can be within the intron of the gene the answer is it can only regulate a nearby gene so that is the incorrect statement this enhancer can actually activate transcription rate of far away genes or distant genes so this is an enhancer sequence you can see this is a promoter sequence where RNA polymerase binds and this is the transcription site or structural genes so activator proteins or transcription factors binds to this enhancer sequence which can be upstream downstream or within introns and that causes some kind of folding that facilitates the binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter sequence more effectively thus enhancing the rate of transcription question number four which one of the following statements about alleles is not true here also we need to pick out the incorrect statement option a they may occupy different loci in the same chromosome option b there may be several at one locus option number c one may be dominant over other option number d they may show codominance here as you know this is there are codominant alleles so one allele may be dominant over other there can be several at one locus in the case of a b or blood group like that so the option first option is the incorrect statement they they may occupy different loci in the same chromosome so this is a chromosome this is a homologous chromosome one chromosome from the mother and one chromosome from the father so you can see this is the allele tall tall that is for a particular trait that is height allele is a variant of alternate forms of a gene so you can see here it can be capital T here it will be capital T or small t like that so it occupies same position on the homologous chromosomes locus means the position physical position on the chromosome tall capital tall and small tall uh, small t cannot occur on the same chromosome that is the first statement which is the incorrect statement it cannot be uh, it cannot occupy different loci on the same chromosome it should be on different homologous chromosome question number five allele a capital a is dominant over allele small a and results in dark skin pigmentation in a mating of capital a small a with capital a small a if six, six offsprings are produced the probability of all having dark pigment is options are 0.18 b.75 c.24 d.12 first of all we have to draw a Punnett square and answer is 0.18 this is how we reach this answer so the from Punnett square these are the genotypes capital A capital A capital A small a capital A small a and small a small a therefore these three will be showing the phenotype dark skin pigmentation as capital A allele, allele is dominant over small a allele and this is the only one with the other pigmentation pattern so the probability is 3 by 4 so here there are six offsprings therefore the answer will be 3 by 4 raised to 6 that is 0.75 raised to 6 that is 0.1779 that is 0.18 question number six a bacterial culture grown in a medium containing radioactive sulfur would incorporate the radio label in the tetrapeptide options are Option A, serine, cysteine, tyrosine, methionine. Option B, threonine, lysine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid. Option C, alanine, proline, histidine, and glycine. Option D, tryptophan, phenylalanine, valine, and isoleucine. This is a very simple question. As you know that sulfur-containing amino acids, only radioactive sulfur can attach to sulfur-containing amino acids. So here the sulfur-containing amino acid is cysteine and methionine. Therefore, the option first is A is the right answer. So, from this topic, amino acids, there are different characters that you can expect many questions. For example, which is the simplest amino acid? That is glycine. Which is alpha helix terminator? That is proline. So, auxin, the precursor of auxin hormone is tryptophan. Which, is having, which amino acid is having buffering capacity? That is histidine, like that. And I will be dropping the link in the description section for your reference. Question number seven. 
Of this double stranded DNA sequences given below, the sequence that is expected to have a higher melting temperature is Melting temperature is the temperature at which half of the sample is denatured or half of the sample gets single stranded. Options are these are the options ATG. In this question, the question asks about the melting temperature, which will which of the sequence are having higher melting temperature. As you know that the bonding between guanine and cytosine, there are three hydrogen bonds, therefore the melting temperature will be high compared to AT bonds, adenine and thiamine, which is having two hydrogen bonds. So pick out the sequence which is having maximum number of GC content and that will be having higher melting temperature. Here that sequence is option B. Question number 8. A peptide of sequence SHELR is isolated from bacteria. Which one of the following options lists the possible phosphorylation site in the peptide? Options are A. H B. L. C. R. D. E. And these are the full form H for histidine, L for leucine, R for arginine and E for glutamic acid. Option A is the correct answer. The amino acids most commonly phosphorylated are serine, threonine and tyrosine in eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, histidine is the common, most common phosphorylation site. Recently, histidine is also reported in humans also as a phosphorylation site. This is the second question from the topic amino acids. Question number nine. Competitive inhibition of an enzyme can be reduced by Options are reducing the amount of the substrate, option B increasing the amount of substrate, option C decreasing the amount of the enzyme and option D diluting the reaction mixture. Here the option, right option is option B increasing the amount of substrate. So this is what is happening. An enzyme will be having a substrate that is matching to the active site of the enzyme. So this is a competitive inhibitor which is analogous to this substrate which is having a shape that is perfectly matches with the active site therefore this competes with this active site along with the substrate so in order to remove or reduce competitive inhibition if the concentration of the substrate is increased this competitor will compete for the active site but the concentration of the substrate has increased it cannot bind to the active site. Thereby, competitive inhibition can be nullified or reduced. Question number 10. If a cell carries 21 pairs of chromosomes just after completion of mitotic telophase, how many chromatids will be there in metaphase? This is a very common question in almost all competitive exams of biology. Options are A21, B42, C84 D168 and the right answer is 84 and this question the wording of this question is slight confusing let us see how we reach this 84 so this is a question after telophase there are 21 pairs of chromosome therefore 42 chromosome in the newly formed cell so before at G1, the number of chromosome is also 40. The number of DNA molecule or number of chromatids is also 42. During S phase, this is duplicated. So after S phase, number of chromosomes will be 42, which will be, but the number of chromatid molecules, it will be 84. DNA molecule or chromatids, it will be 84. Here, two chromatids are held at a common centromere making a chromosome so the answer is 84 hope you are clear with these questions so work out maximum number of questions hope this video helped your understanding and also in your preparation if you like this video please support this channel by sharing this content subscribe and like you are with biologyexamsforit.com. Thank you so much for your attentions and your suggestions and comments.